Hello friends, this video on photosynthesis in higher plants part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. No phosphorylation. So now we will discuss about cyclic photophosphorylation. Now as the name suggests, this is also going to be photophosphorylation that is ATP synthesis in presence of light. But this is going to be a cyclic process. That means the starting point is going to be the same as the ending point. So here only PS1 is functional. So we do not have two photosystems here. Only one photosystem and that also we have only PS1. So here PS1 works independently of PS2 because PS2 anyways is not present here. But if you talk about PS1, PS1 is involved in both non-cyclic as well as cyclic photophosphorylation. But PS1 works independently of PS2 to produce ATP through this process called cyclic photophosphorylation. Now in non-cyclic process, both PS2 and PS1 together produce ATP and NADPH. But other than that also, PS1 does a part-time job. And what is that part-time job? It does cyclic photophosphorylation independent of PS2 and with this process it produces some extra ATP molecules. Right? So both the processes happen. It is not that either cyclic process will happen or either non-cyclic process will happen. Both the processes happen and both the processes are independent of each other. So PS1 is multitasking. It manages non-cyclic as well as cyclic photophosphorylation. So here cyclic flow of electrons take place. So the flow of electrons starts from PS1 and it comes back to PS1. So something like this, let us suppose this is PS1. So the electrons get excited from PS1. It passes through the electron transport chain and then it comes back to PS1. That is why it is known as cyclic photophosphorylation. Here, ATP synthesis take place but important point to note here is that NADPH synthesis does not take place here. Only ATP synthesis will take place. As I said NADPH synthesis does not take place. Both of these are important points to be noted. Only ATP synthesis and no NADPH synthesis. So that is also an important difference between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Where does it occur? It occurs in the stroma lamellae membranes. So if you talk about the thylakoid membranes, in the thylakoid membranes, non-cyclic photophosphorylation used to occur. And where is the stroma? This is the stroma lamellae, that is the joints. So they also have a membrane. Like for example, this is how it is. These are the thylakoids, the stacks, right? And they are connected by the stroma lamellae. So now the non-cyclic photophosphorylation occurs here in the membranes of the thylakoids. But the cyclic photophosphorylation occurs in the membrane of the stroma lamellae here in these membranes. So this will occur here, again this will occur here. So wherever stroma lamellae is there, in the membranes of the stroma lamellae, cyclic photophosphorylation will occur. Because in the membranes of stroma lamellae, PS2 is not present, only PS1 is present. So now let us look at the process of cyclic photophosphorylation. So let us see what happens in the process of cyclic photophosphorylation. So in a very similar way here you just have PS1. Now as I mentioned before there is only PS1 which is involved. So this is your PS1. Right? So PS1 has chloro, the reaction center of PS1 has chlorophyll P700. That is, it will absorb the 700 nanometer wavelength of the incident light. So here light falls on PS1. Okay. So let us suppose light falls here. So what will happen? The pigments of PS1 will absorb the light wavelengths, especially the reaction center will absorb the 700 nanometer wavelength of light. As a result, the electron will get excited. So as I said, reaction center absorbs 700 nanometer wavelength of light. So electrons will get excited. Now what happens when the electron gets excited? 
the electrons gets excited and is accepted by the primary acceptor or the electron acceptor whatever you call it so the electron will be the excited electron will be picked up by the electron acceptor right now the electrons will be passed through a chain of electron carriers so what is that chain of carriers now this electron acceptor will pass through the next electron carrier which is ferredoxin so it will pass to ferredoxin now from ferredoxin it will pass to another carrier called plastoquinone so these are all protein structures so from plastoquinone it will pass to the cytochrome complex so just note the differences in the electron carriers which form the electron transport chain in case of non cyclic photophosphorylation plastoquinone cytochrome complex they all form the electron transport chain between ps2 and ps1 whereas ferredoxin was a part of the electron transport chain after ps1 but here it is a combination of all the molecules so here it is first ferredoxin then plastoquinone then cytochrome complex from cytochrome complex it goes to plastocyanin and from plastocyanin it goes back to ps1 so that is how it is a cyclic process now during this process of electron transport where is the atp getting generated that is the question now this during this electron transport again a proton gradient is created across the membrane right because here now why are we using the term thylakoid membrane well here it is getting created we should not say it is thylakoid membrane rather it is the stroma lamellae membrane because this happens in the stroma lamellae membranes so across that membrane a proton gradient is created so inside that uh, structure let us suppose if this is the stroma lamellae so inside there will be more protons and outside there will be less protons the concept will be exactly similar to non cyclic phosphorylation so as a result of this proton gradient what will happen a lot of energy will be produced so activation of atp synthase enzyme catalyze the process of phosphorylation so whenever there is a proton gradient created what will happen atp synthase enzyme will be activated then what will happen it will cause facilitated diffusion the process is exactly the same it is just that here there is no ps2 so the electron transport chain is consisting of different electron carriers because here it is happening in a different place altogether it is happening in the membrane of the stroma lamellae so maybe different molecules are present here so that is why you have different electron carriers here when compared to your non cyclic process so once the atp synthase enzyme is activated it will cause uh, a breakdown of the proton gradient and that breakdown of proton gradient will release enough energy to convert adp into atp so adp will be phosphorylated that is an organic phosphate will be added to adp to form atp and this will happen while the electron passes from plastocyanin to ps1 so here what happens is while the electron passes through so many electron carriers it never reaches nadp plus so you see in the electron transport chain nadp plus has never come because had it reached nadp plus in that case nadph would have also been formed like how it was formed in case of non cyclic photophosphorylation but here it never encountered nadp plus why because the stroma lamellae does not have the nadp reductase enzyme so that is another important thing to be noted here nadp reductase enzyme is missing in stroma lamella and that is why nadp plus doesn't come into picture and that is why nadph synthesis also does not 
take place. Similarly, you might ask that then how the synthesis of ATP took place. That is because synthesis of ATP is dependent on ATP synthase enzyme. And ATP synthase enzyme is present in the stroma laminae. That is why because of the uh, development of the proton gradient, the ATP synthase enzyme got activated. And this enzyme caused the phosphorylation of ADP to form ATP. And that is how ATP is synthesized by the process of cyclic photophosphorylation. So let us quickly look at the conclusion of cyclic photophosphorylation. So this is how the process occurs. Light falls on PS1 that is P700. So electrons get excited. Electron is taken uh, picked up by the first electron acceptor. From there it moves through the electron transport system and then it comes back to PS1. Meanwhile, enough energy is released due to breakdown of the proton gradient which activates ATP synthase enzyme which in turn causes phosphorylation of ADP to form ATP. So that is the overall process of cyclic photophosphorylation. So here ATP synthesis takes place. NADPH and O2 not produced. Why? NAP, NADPH is not produced because as I said NADPH NADP plus reductase enzyme is missing in the stroma laminae and this process takes place in the stroma laminae. Why oxygen is not produced? Because here there is no PS2. PS2 is not there. So there is no deficiency of electrons in PS2 and there is no photolysis reaction taking place because O2 was a product of photolysis reaction. But here the electron and now you might ask here also electron deficiency is taking place because the electron is lost. So who is compensating for the electron deficiency? Now here this is a cyclic process. So see here the electron is again given back from plastocyanin to chlorophyll. So electron is first lost but again it comes back to it. So there is no deficiency of electron as such in PS1. So you don't need any photolysis to compensate for the electron. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.